what is happening in the Lord. And I'm glad that you are here. Tell those who are not here today that our churches are open. Amen. That we are not detached. And we shall not be moved. Praise the Lord. Precious Father, we come before you today, thanking you for the ministration we already got through the members of the choir, reminding us that the things we hold dear to our hearts are things that are borrowed, that are not really ours, and that we need the grace to be able to use those things to brighten our lives. That we are pilgrims and strangers here on earth, remind us that what has the beginning will surely have an end, remind us that there is eternity with you in glory, remind us that the just shall live by faith, remind us that your soul will have no pleasure in death, that turn back, that looks back. That slows down, remind us. Remind us, Lord, that one day we come, that we stand before the judgment throne of God. The first day. That while life remains, with all our life, with all our strength, we will honor you. We will live for you. Would do your will and fulfill the purpose for which you have been created and sent into this world. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. And uh, understand again that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy. Understand that in the presence of God there is healing and there is health. In the presence of God there is purpose and there is fulfillment of those purposes. And as you have come today, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your household. And everything you lay your hands upon to do will prosper in Jesus' name. Earlier today, we look at the life of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba that came to visit him to visit him. And the question came from our moderating pastor, the resident pastor. What was the background? What led to where Solomon got into? And different people gave different answers. And you will agree with me, and we all know that. This one thing Solomon did. Yes, somebody said he sought the Lord. Somebody said he followed the legacy of the Father. And so on and so forth. Solomon, in the midst of all this, honored God. And God honored him. Whenever we choose to honor God in our life, God is not a debtor. He will pay us back in our own coin. And if we choose not to honor God, He still will pay us back in our own coin. But I pray we'll do the right thing in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at the message, Honor begets honor. Honor begets honor. Whatsoever you sow, you will read. First Corinth, so, sorry, First Samuel. Chapter 2, verse 30. All the way back in the wilderness, something happened. The children of Israel, they went into idolatry. When Moses went up to the mountain to receive the 
Ten Commandments. Before he came, Aaron had led them into idolatry. Eventually, Moses came with fury and with anger, holy anger. Threw up the tablet in his hand. Eventually declared, Whosoever is on the side of the Lord, come near. And the Levites responded. God said, The firstborn of the Israelites that were taken to be mine when all the firstborn in Egypt were destroyed. Now, because of these, they are rejected. And the Levites, at these moments of time, this trying time, at a time when the majority has, have lost their faith in God, turned their backs on God, at such a time that compromise has taken over the land, at such a time that the multitude have gone the way of warring. Levites, the Levites, that offer to stand with me shall be mine. And pay attention. At such a time, the Levites, they honor God. The Levites ignore the multitude in their millions that were on the other side. And God honored them. And God positioned them to handle the priesthood. And God said, you'll be mine forever. And you never lack anyone to officiate in that office. Then came a man. After many years, thousands of years and generations, then came a man by name Eli. I pray that at your time, the name of the Lord will not be desecrated. Through your family, the name of the Lord will not be dragged to the mud in Jesus' name. Eli, for whatsoever reason, saw the abomination and the transgression of his children. Of course, Eli spoke. Some felt Eli did nothing. Eli actually did something. But unfortunately, Eli did not do enough. Eli did told the children, the report is coming to me of all that you are doing. If a man sin against man, you can run to God. But if you sin against God, who will atone for you? But he didn't do enough. The level of discipline that was necessary was not met then. The actions that Eli should have taken were not taken. Eli became like a dog that could bark but couldn't bite. And Eli was concerned about if these children are not there, who is going to handle the work of the priesthood? Eli forgot that God raises up and God pulls down. God creates and God can kill. That God can make provision for himself. That no man is indispensable in the sight of the Lord. Eli for God. That God is number one and not his children. At the end of the day, after much patience, after much waiting, after much endurance, God responded and God found the replacements for opening and being held. Though little the child was, Samuel, yet God chose to speak to that young man. How I pray that God will find a willing soul in you in Jesus' name. God said in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, 
I said indeed. God is saying, yes, this is what I said. Get me right and clear. I'm not contradicting myself. Yes, I said indeed. But whatsoever I said is conditional. My blessings are conditional. My promises are conditional. My protection and preservation is conditional. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me for how long? Forever. Forever. Reservation for the family. But now. But now. When your father and your forefathers walk with me, I made the promise. But now. That you have come back at me. But now. That you have desecrated my temple. But now. But now. The Lord said, Be it far from me. Now read what follows. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. I pray you will not be dishonored. The temple worshiping, the glory of God came down and cloud filled the place, and everybody had to step aside. Now we were downstairs with the children and we're talking about the temple and the children were telling me the temple is your body. And we're talking about how to build the physical temple. And they told me, children, the children, that you need sand, you need water, you need brick, you need wood, you need hammer, you need drill. They told me all kinds of things. And that is building the physical temple. And then I said, how about building the temple here? And they began to tell me, you need holiness. You need righteousness. You need purity. You need love. You need joy. You need peace. You need temperament. You need, you need faith. And they told me all these things. Pay attention. If we are going to build this temple, we must honor God in this temple. I need a better one. We must honor the name of the Lord. We must honor the person of the Lord. We must honor the glory of the Lord. And God gave Solomon wisdom, honor, power, peace, and everything that is needed. When we look at the world in which we live today, we seldom hear the word honor. We seldom hear it. It is no longer in our vocabulary. Disrespect is now the order of the day. A closer look at the social media, a social look at politics of our time, a, such a closer look at the news we read from time to time will reveal to us the absence of honor in our society. Many homes are in disarray because of this honor. Father and mother, husband and wife cannot see eye to eye because of this honor. Parents and children cannot walk up together because of this honor. Come to the church. Where everything is supposed to originate from, we see this honor. Leaders, dishonoring members, members, dishonoring leaders. People talking anyhow and acting anyhow. The name of the Lord is no more sacred, even in the house of the Lord. Things will change. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Employers and employees, promotion and crisis everywhere. The government and the subjects, the same thing. Unfortunately, the kind of leader we have today is such that doesn't even care about honor for anyone or dignity in any place. But 
If we are Christians, please pay, on, pay attention. We can't judge the people out there if we cannot judge ourselves. Because judgment must begin from where? From the hands of the Lord. It must begin from me and from you. Before we can open our mouth and condemn any politician, any leader, anyone out there, we must look inward and ask ourselves, how are we doing since we change? What is honor? Honor stands for high regard, high respect, or great esteem for somebody. Honor means to hold precious and to support somebody. When you respect somebody, they are precious to you. You don't, you don't address them anyhow. You don't talk to them anyhow. You don't just deal with them anyhow. Even pay attention, even in their absence. Because of the honor you have for that individual, even in their absence, you still show your honor them. A lot of believers, when the person is there, you hear, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Let the person turn his or her It's a different story. Honor is treating people the way we ought to be treated and esteeming them and trusting the Lord will help us. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor all men. Oh, right? But the younger are supposed to honor the elder. Honor all men. But the employee is supposed to be the one honoring the employer. Employer. Honor all men. Is it not just the members of the church that you honor the pastor of the church? Pastor, honor all men. Parents, honor the children. Children, honor your parents. The Bible says, honor who? All men. Love the brotherhood. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Honor the king. The king can be your father. The king can be your mother. The king can be your boss. The king can be your employer. The king can be somebody even under you. But God is using it in a different way other than yourself. Honor the king. Honor the king. Honor the king. You have the gifts in this area. The other person has gifts in this other area. Honor the king. That is the king in that area. Honor the king. There is nothing for us to compete about. There is enough space in the air for everybody to fly. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 7. And God spake all this words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Remember, as sinners were bondage, as sinners were lost, Verse 3, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visit him iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy unto thousands look at it verse six and show mercy unto thousands of them that did what love me and keep my commandment thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold thee guiltless that taketh his name in vain. When you love somebody, when you honor somebody, you love the person. When you honor somebody, you obey that person. You follow the instruction and direction of that person. You make that person happy, glad, and joyful. Colossians 3, 17 says, and whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. It is a common saying. 
in this country that you get what you pay for. Have you heard that before? Here we are talking about the supernatural, spiritual, foreign exchange. Hear the word of the Lord. I will honor those that honor me. And despise them that despise me. It's an exchange. You want to be honored? Honor God. You want to be honored? Pay attention. You see, some people are so unspiritual, though they think they are spiritual, that they can only honor certain categories and calibers of people. Or that they can only honor God alone and they don't have to honor man. Read your Bible. Honor all men. Honor all men. Every man, everybody wants to be honored and respected. If you got disrespected, will you be happy? I'm asking the question. Will you be happy for being disrespected? No. So, don't disrespect others. Everyone, body wants a little thank you for the good they have done. When you don't say thank you, you don't appreciate that. You close the door against future goodies. Everybody wants some obedience from those that are sub their subordinates. Parents expect some dignified honor from their children. And if you are a child here, pay attention to me. Irrespective of the environment here, understand somewhere living in a terrible environment, lawless environment, rebellious environment, godless environment, yet Samuel made up his mind. He was going to be different. I pray you will be different. Honor your parents. Respect your parents. Pay attention as we talk to the children about honoring their parents. We talk to the adults also. We also have parents. We have spiritual parents. We have leaders. We have counselors and guides. We have people that are over us in everything. Let us honor them. You want to be honored? You want to be promoted? You want to be elevated? You want to be exalted? You want to be appreciated? Honor others. It doesn't cost anything. No, it doesn't cost anything. Sure, it doesn't cost anything. As a matter of fact, you are over and you are honoring people under you, they honor you the more. You are younger, you are honoring people over you, they respect you the more. Honor begets honor. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Wives, understand. Your husband expects you to honor them. Husband, understand. Your wife expects you to honor them. Honor all men. Honor all men. If you're a king, you're a leader, you expect people to honor you, you also do the same thing to honor people. And above all, God expects us to honor him. And there are different ways that we dishonor God. We may try to justify our dishonor. We may try to rationalize our dishonor. We may try to give excuse for the things we are doing contrary to honoring God. The key word is, is honoring God. And God will not take it lightly with whosoever, man, woman, old, young, pastor, or few member. If God could deal with Eli and cancel a lifelong generational promise, God will deal with any man. 
honor begets honor. I look at three points. Number one, the priority of honoring God. The priority. Make it a priority in your life. Point number two, the peril of dishonoring God's grace. God's grace. Now, this point is going beyond just God now. But the graces that God has put around you, the, the elegance, when we talk about grace, we're talking about the elegance. When we talk about grace here, we're talking about refinement, the beauty that God has created, the things that God has polished, the people that God has raised up and put around you that as you honor those people you are honoring god as you respect them you are respecting god and you are promoting the work of the lord and you are encouraging unity and oneness within the body but you trash everything you ignore everything you 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 criticize everything you are tearing apart the work of the lord there is a peril for that and finally there's going to be the problem I pray to be profited. The profit of honoring God and the government. Honoring God and government. Government in this sense. Includes the government of the land. If you were here earlier, I told you that we are meeting because the law says within this number you can meet. If it says don't meet, we will close down. If they don't say so, no matter what is going on out there, we know that the Lord is our shepherd. And we shall not lack. We shall not lack strength. We shall not lack health. We shall not lack protection. We shall not lack divine covering. So we are not afraid of whatsoever is going on out there. We won't go and invite trouble to ourselves, but we know that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper in Jesus' name. So we honor the government. The laws of the land, we obey them. We are law abiding citizens of the land. But then that government could also be the church government. You honor the Lord. That government could be your family government. Father, the mother, and the family. Those are the heads of the home. And even when you say the father, the mother, you know the way God prioritizes things. You put things in the right perspective. The government may be on your job, your leader. So when I say God and the government, I'm talking about everything combolized. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. By the way, what's the first point again? The priority of honoring God. First Samuel again, chapter 2, verse 30. We have called the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me, tell me, shall be lightly esteemed. Psalm 100, verse 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. That's honoring the Lord. That's praising the Lord. That's appreciating the Lord. That's accepting the person and the power of God. Verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Look up here. How are you serving God? Grudgingly. Reluctantly, the Bible says, Serve the Lord. That's how to honor the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. I've told you here time again and again that when you come to the house of God, you come happy, you come joyful. Even if you are hungry in your tummy, let there be a smile on your face. I need an amen. Even if you have to be washing the same clothes and wearing every day, let there be joy in your heart. Praise the Lord. 1981. I planned coming to the United States of America. 
but then it didn't work out for obvious reasons. I wasn't ready to compromise my faith, so I couldn't come. 1986, I made another attempt. 81 was better than 86 because 81, nothing was at stake. By 1986, I already sold my business. By 1986, I gave out one bagel free, collected no cent. I sold another one just to get something because I was going to America. You know how we Africans think America is heaven. Welcome to heaven. How heavenly is America now? I know a lot of you are thinking if you have your way, you'll go back to where you came from. But unfortunately, when you left, they closed the border against you. Even though the president is even trying to send you back, over there they are not ready to, they are not ready to accept you. See your predicament. We all thought America is like heaven. Everything, because the story, they told us lies. They told us how easy it is to make money in America. Just washing plates, you are in money. Sweeping floor, you are in money. Even the work that people will not normally do, even wash, washing dead body. How many times have you seen them washing dead body here? They told us lies. And so, we were ready to give up anything and everything to come over. And I gave up everything. Thank God, I did not resign from the bank where I was working there. I was just going to use my leave to come over. And then when I get here, then I send them a letter of resignation. Thank God. That was the only safety. Maybe I would have committed suicide. Amen. It didn't work out. In 1986, again, it was then I said, okay, if I can't go to America, let me settle down in my country and plan life. That was when I began to think, okay, I think I need to get married now. Praise God. Are you paying attention? But one thing, though, property was gone, Building was gone, land was gone, vehicles were gone, all those things were gone. I remember, I, I still speak now, there was one thing in me, the joy of the Lord was there. And I said to myself, at that second attempt, when it fell, I said, America is not heaven. And I told myself, I was not going to compromise anything for America. That is honoring God. Are you paying attention here? Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Little did I know that all those were trials of my faith. To know whether I was going to sell my bad tribes for the mundane things of this world, I didn't know. But I took my stand. And I never allow any of those things that were lost to be anything. Only for God on his own to open the door in a unique way. Now, not for me to come by myself, but to come with my wife and my children. We eat our green card in our hand. Praise the Lord. When you honor God, the Lord will honor you. Trust me, I gave up all hope of coming to America. I didn't know it was a test of my faith. Honor the Lord. Where am I speaking from today? Praise the Lord. Honor God. I'm pleading with you, honor God. I can multiply testimonies in my own life where opportunities came for me to compromise and I said no. 
do you know somebody who was the closest to me? And everybody knew. Decided to take this church away under another name. And I stood my ground. And I said over my dead body, yes, we know one another. We are very close. We've done a lot of things together on the basis of holiness and righteousness. Anything short of that can't me out. We are still here today by the grace of God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I never knew then that I'm going to be who I am today. I was just an ordinary pastor over one church. By that singular act, today, by the grace of God, I pastor more than 60 churches in this country. Honor begets honor. Are you listening to me? It may not be easy. It may be tough and challenging. But when you honor God, He will honor you in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of all thy increase. There are people here, they are begging you to serve God. They are begging you to come to church. They are begging you to pray. They are begging you to read your Bible. They are begging you to, to do things in the church. You have the energy. You have the strength. Your eyes are open. You are not blind. Your ears are working. You are not deaf. Your mouth, you are not dumb. You are not paralyzed in your hands. Your legs are all okay. And yet, you are not serving the Lord. What will you do with your life? And some of you, you called upon God, you cried unto God, and God bless you with a good job. God help you, you pass your examination. And then God put you in a good position. Now, for you to pay ordinary 10% of your income is a problem. The Bible says, honor the Lord. Honor. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy increase. You honor the Lord with your time, with your talent, with your treasure. Everything that you have. When you honor God, you appreciate God. You honor his name. Pay attention. Some people are telling lies. And they are calling the name of God as a seal on their lives. And they say, God knows. Yeah, God knows you are a liar. And God knows that all liars will end up in hellfire. God knows you are dishonoring Him. You appreciate God. You honor His name. You love God. You obey Him. You serve Him. You honor His servants. Honor the men of God. Some of us are too quick to run our mouths on the men of God. Honor the servants of the Lord. They are representing God. Keep the house of God clean. What did I just say? How dare you come to church with three God and you are stopping it on the chair? And we can't walk on the ground without chewing gum on our shoes? Honor the house of the Lord. How dare you come to the house of the Lord and where you sit down with your children? There are crumbs of cookies, wraps of cookies, and the place was swept clean before you came, but now you came. Mr. Christian, Mrs. Holiness. You met it clean, you left it dirty. It shows how dirty your heart is. You clean up the house of God. The house of God. You make the house of God. You, you, you visualize that if God is physically present here. If God were to be present, would you just do anything anyhow? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. And please excuse this expression. I'm not putting down anyway. 
when I come to Washington, D.C., I see a number of places littered. But as soon as I cross the border to Virginia, it's a different thing entirely. The thought of people wanting to drop things on the floor will not even cross your mind. Different environment. I think the people in Virginia honor the state more than people in D.C. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You want to make sure that by the grace of God, you take proper care of the house of God. You keep it clean and tidy. Keep it clean and tidy. Pay attention. If I am passing by and I see a paper on the floor, I didn't drop it there. I didn't know who did. You know what I do? I bend down. I pick it up. You know what? I have done it this morning already. But many of you will not only pass by, you will drop it there. Honor the Lord. Amen. And the Lord will honor you. I need a better one. It's like I'm stepping on your toes. That somebody say, ah, ah, we defy coronavirus. We came to church and you are pounding our head like this. I will pound your head into heaven. I need a better one. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you praise God, you are honoring God. And then you say, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I wish. I will. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice in them. Rejoice in them. Listen, many a times the things we spend quality time praying about is not worth it. Flip it around. Spend that time you are spending in prayer on praising God. And you see your miracle. Amen. You need to come see me in my house. Most of you here have not been to my house. I'm going to invite you one. Amen. Sometimes when I'm praising God, you see me dancing. Praise the Lord. I know I did that here before. I don't go dance anywhere, but when I'm in the presence of God, I praise my God. I rejoice in the Lord. And I don't care who is looking. I don't care what anybody is saying. I just joy in the Lord God of my salvation. Amen. But then, you pray. When you pray to God, you are saying, God, the arms of the flesh will fail me. I need you. And God honors you. It means, it's just like a child saying, Daddy, I need your help. Mommy, I need your help. But when you go to your parents and you do like this, I can do it by myself. Your parents will leave you. And when you fail, then you come back crying. You will not fail. If you honor God, you will prioritize the things of God. You make them number one thing in your life. Number one thing. Number one thing. Number one thing. Can I do something that you don't like? Can I do something you don't like? I know your answer is going to be because you don't want to do something you don't like. How many of you came late to church this morning? You came late to church. You came late. All right. 
I know some of you now will begin to now politicalize it. What time is late? Is it 8 o'clock or 9.30? Is it a such the scripture time of praise worship time? Praise God. Honey, we are late. But we are going in. Look at how many times you have been late this year. Though. If you have been that late on your job, what would have happened to you? Tell your neighbor, honor God. Praise God. If you are honoring God, pay attention here. You know, we announce every now and then that every Saturday is evangelism. And you have been told again today that next Saturday we are going to Silver Spring. You know, last weekend, I was supposed to be in Queens, New York, but I needed to be here for evangelism. I canceled it. Yesterday, I was to be in Brooklyn, New York for a program I canceled because of evangelism. So I can be here with you. If you really, really love the Lord, you will give up anything and everything to propagate the gospel of Christ. Propagation of the gospel. If you really love the Lord. Amen. And then you seek the Lord, you seek his kingdom. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Amen. When you're honoring God, you trust him. You trust him. You just know he's, he's a man of his world. Proverbs 35 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. You trust the Lord. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. When you honor the Lord, you will just believe him. You just hold him by his word. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. To please God. We will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will obey God. You know, the first king of Israel, King Saul, was told to go and destroy all the Amalekites, the people, the properties, the animals, everything. Everything destroyed. But King Saul got there. So the choices animal, the power ground, and everything, and disobeyed. That was the beginning of his downfall. Samuel eventually said to him in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, and said, Have the Lord as great delight in bond offering and sacrifices as in obeying his voice. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Simple obedience. That's what God is asking for from you and from me. Leave the result with God. You just obey and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I told you, you will propagate the gospel and we're told that whosoever that winneth soul is wise. That is the first time. So, the soul winning is not only for pastors, it's not only for workers, it's not only for old people in the church. Pay attention here. Soul winning is for who? You, me, everybody, if you are born again. Even the Samaritan woman, before we could say she was baptized in the water, no water baptism yet. Before we could say, Give with the Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost baptism yet. Before we could say sanctification, no sanctification yet. Just first encounter, she ran to the city and began to propagate the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get to heaven, the Samaritan woman, her real name we don't know. When we get to heaven, we will see her face to face. She will stand to condemn many of us. I pray we will not be judged. Winning soul. If you are honoring the law, we are going to help the poor. Help the poor. Help the poor. 
We won't be selfish. We won't be self-centered. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 talks about honoring God's people, especially his servants. For sake of time, I get to the second point. The peril of dishonoring God's grace. God's grace. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. I need an amen. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom here and finally honor to whom honor honor to this honor to this I listened to a minister of God one day and he said something that's very profound he was talking about pay attention here especially to a marriage he was talking about marriage and family life and he was talking about relation between the husband and the wife and he made this profound statement. He said, every man, every man loves the one he serves. He loves the Lord. And he said, every man loves the one that serves him. If you are serving, he loves you. He said, but he fights the one that competes with him. And I said, wow. This is profound. Is that not why there is crisis in many of our families? Because there is competition, competition between God and God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But then you discover that when the wife honors the husband, what does the husband do? The husband honors the wife. You can use the word love. Honors the wife. Honor the guest. But if you say, well, we have equal rights, you now say, oh yeah, there are no two captains piloting the aircraft at the same time. No two captains piloting the ship at the same time. But you know, when you honor the man, the man can even get off the seat and allow you to take over the pilot. No fully way. Isn't that? what God did when he handed over everything to his son Jesus Christ. Am I communicating? When I see women competing with their husbands, I say they are not smart. Because if you are smart, every wise woman will build her own house, her own home. Excuse the language and will end up enslaving the man. Do you get the, 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 the message? When you just honor the man, what the man is speaking for is what? Honor. You honor him. Honey, I need $1,000. Oh, I don't think I can afford $1,000, but I can give you $800. I can manage $800. You get that. Honey, we need to go to store. Oh, yes. Just go with me. By the time honey gets to the store, who is going to pay? It's honey. It's honey. 
Praise God. And you know, if you came from the part of the world I came from, where they, they appreciate women kneeling down for them, amen, praise God. And I think they do it in different parts of the world also, because the, where I came from, the man is considered the king. And you bow to the king, and you worship the king, right? And then, when you bow to the king, the king is there. Huh? And whatever you want from the king, the king does. Women is smart. Are you listening to me? If Delilah, pay attention here, that unbeliever, that wicked woman, that harlot, if Delilah could win over Samson and paralyze Samson, we Christians with godly wisdom, we can do better. I expect the women here to say amen. You can win the heart of your husband. Give, give him good food. Come for couples retreat in uh, September. Or what is it uh, in July? Because uh, there, is, there, there is more to say. I think by the time we finish, the men will still love me. And they will still accept me into their community. Praise God. But come in July, and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Many today are languishing in poverty for failure to acknowledge and appreciate the goodness of God in the lives of others. That other person may be your child. Bring great Appreciate it. Appreciate that child. Maybe it's not even your child. Amen. There is a young man here. The way he comports himself, the young man is in there. The way he carries himself, the way he does the work of God, you can see the, the commitment to the Lord, the consecration to the Lord, the devotion to the Lord, the sacrifices to the Lord. And, then, and nobody is forcing him, and the father is not here, the mother is not here. Nobody is actually forcing him. He just loves the Lord. Praise God. Day, was it in January or December? I felt it to appreciate the pastor said, and then I remember that. Moment. Do you know the honor that the pastor got that young man got the same honor? I want to put your hands together. Encourage the young people. Oh, you are not happy that you are, you, are, you are not the one getting the honor. Praise God. One day, God will remember you. Are you paying attention here? Be your best for the Lord. That person may be your child, may be your wife. There are some husbands that are jealous of their wives. The Lord is using their wife greatly and mightily, and they are unhappy, they are sad and sorrowful. Pay attention. You will never move forward yourself. Because what you saw is what you will read. You know, flip it around. Is some women that are jealous of their husband. They see everybody praising the man. Oh, thank you, pastor. Oh, thank you, brother. And it's like, oh, which brother? Jealous. God will deliver you. That person may be your pastor. That God is using greatly and mightily. It may be just an ordinary member of the church that God just poured the grace upon him. And that member, no title, no position, nothing, nothing, nothing. Like uh, the illiterates in America, they will say, no, nothing. Instead of just saying nothing, they will say no nothing. When you say no nothing, what does that mean? There's something. They don't understand English. They are illiterate. It can be your parents. 